You arrive at the ruins of Queen's Crown. Standing in a small lake, the ruined tower has a faint glimmer of gold at its top, but the rest of the structure is completely overgrown. Welcome back to A Clash of Kings 7.1 Reformers, and we are going to be exploring these ruins just before we speak to Lord Commander Mormont. Yes, hopefully we'll be able to get a good resolution with him, and... The ruined tower on the island is cut off from the surrounding area, and if a bridge ever existed, it's certainly gone now. But a hidden path of stones appears to have been placed in the lake, leading onto the island. Alright, so a path of stones, eh? Ah, uh, you mean this? Ah, uh, I should probably not use my horse for this. <laughs> Let's face it. Okay, so bear in mind that I can actually die from drowning in this, uh, in this mod, because I have that setting turned on. So got to be a bit careful. The upper part of the tower is just as ruined as the rest, but small specks of gold can be seen on the parapets, giving them a brighter look than the rest of the place. And Sir Felton has advanced to level 8. Very nice. Okay, so hopefully there's not going to be anything too dangerous around here. I, I would doubt it. I mean, let's face it. And maybe we can get inside. The inner part of the tower is filled with rotten leaves and mushrooms. It's clear that no one's been here for a very long time. Is, uh, is that it? Ah, there we go. We've successfully explored. Fantastic. All right. So that's great. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, a lot of you, or a couple of you at the very least, want to see what the world map looks like. Well, the world map is not really changing that much. That's generally the reason why I will tend to edit out any travel times and things like that, because I want it to be much more of a streamlined experience, and, uh, well, traveling is usually kind of not really that interesting and not unless we come across some crazy stuff and I haven't really come across anything too crazy so as you can see not much has happened dawn's the same reach is the same stormlands is the same westerlands the same everything basically is the same with the exception of Kohor actually doing a little bit to attack Mia right here so you can see that uh, they've actually taken a castle from Mia and uh, that's that's basically it. That is, that is basically it. That is basically all that has happened, unfortunately. Nothing too dramatic. And I believe that Lord Commander Mormont is around here. Yes, there he is. I, I went to go and try and, you know, see him. And, uh, yes, he's, he's here. So let's actually speak to him and see what he has to say. Oh, your fame runs before you. Oh, very nice. Very good. Okay, so technically I could join him as a soldier, but I'm not going to do that. I could also offer him my sword and vassalage. I'm also not going to be do that. So I'm going to just say, how can I be of service? The wildlings are disappearing, Elias, and we're hearing strange rumors from the fr Frostfangs. Man's raider is gathering all his strength to him, but for what purpose? I do not know. Cotter Pike reports that queer lights have been seen off the shores, close to Storod's Point, and captured wildlings talk of dead things in the woods. I don't like it. The Night's Watch has been passive for too long. Rangers are disappearing, and now Benjamin Stark is gone as well. We need to know what is happening beyond the wall. All right, well, so we're putting together a, r a ranging group bigger than any seen during my lifetime. We'll find out what is going on in the Frost Fangs, and if the gods are good, we'll find Benjamin Stark. His nephew is currently procuring supplies for the journey through the haunted forest. Talk to him if you wish to join our ranging. Right. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's try to do that then, shall we? Talk to Jon Snow. All right, we need to bring at least 15 men. Well, thankfully, I do have about 15 men, as you can see right here. And uh, we are hopefully going to be able to level up a couple of people here as well. I'm basically just going to make them as much as I can into kind of like warrior archetypes, with the exception of Brynden, who is, of course, going to be our medic. And uh, Elias has actually advanced in level as well, so we should probably do that too. Oh, I haven't leveled him up for many, many levels by the looks of things. That is <laughs> that is my bad. That is my bad 100%. So let's go for agility. Because I want to get some more shield. And I want to get some more athletics. And let's get some more iron flesh as well. Uh, what about weapon master? I think that might be pretty good. Let's go for some more two-handed. Because you never know. Maybe at some point I'm going to be using two-handed. Maybe at some point I'm going to be using archery as well. I think it's highly unlikely I'll be using archery. Because you know me. I like to use pretty heavy armor. And in this mod you are going to lose power draw. If you decide to use heavy armor. Ah, there's John himself. We are going to be speaking to him and saying hello. I've come to join the ranging. 
Ah, good. We'll need everything we can carry. Game is scarce beyond the wall, and the wildlings hardly grow any crops. But we also need able men. Anyone who can swell our ranks is welcome. Well, I'm happy to be cannon fodder. No, no worries. No worries with that. We're leaving soon. Just need to get the last supplies packed down into barrels and get the last ravens into their cages. What about armor and the weapons? I would expect you to bring your own. We all must. This is not going to be a pleasure stroll through a light southern forest. If you join this ranging, you better be prepared. Otherwise, you'll slow down all of us. Very well. Yes, very well indeed. Okay, so let's have a look. Join the ranging. That's all it says. So join the ranging. How do I do that? Ah, that's how I do it. Okay. Before you descend the wall, you take a long look across the forest that extends northwards. Mm, the haunted forest, the wildlings call it. It's a thick and heavy wood. The trees tangled and old. Let us join it. The men of the Night's Watch are gathered in the castle yard, young and old, some of them missing fingers or ears, while others look fresh and untouched by snow and cold. Mounted on sturdy garons, most of them, most of them clothed in thick furs and carrying battle axes, swords, and spears, they look a frightsome lot. At the back of the castle yard is the supply train, bags of grain, cheese, pork, barrels of wine and ale, and a few dozen cages for ravens. Finally, the Lord Commander appears, and the column of men start moving. At the, at the front rides Mormont himself, followed by Thorin Smallwood, Sir Malador Locke, and Jon Snow, his squire. The back of the column is made up of the supplies and spare horses, watched over by two grim rangers on black-coated garons. Striking directly northwards, the first target is an old village a few days from the wall. Let us travel to White Tree. The first thing you come across is an old weirwood, about half a league from the wall. Old and gnarled, the face is carved into an evil grin, and the eyes are dripping with red sap. Moving on, the column of men arrives at a small village. As the men edge closer, it turns out to be completely abandoned, with three small hovels looted and empty. Dywin, one of the rangers, reports that he met the inhabitants not half a year ago, and that they must have left recently. You arrive at White Tree, a small free folk village located northwest of Castle Black. To the north lies water, possibly a lake, and to the west, some small hills. The village consists of four tumble-down one-room houses, which surround a sheepfold and a well. The houses are constructed of unmortared stone and are roofed with sod. Above the village tower is an enormous old weirwood tree. Its trunk is nearly eight feet wide, and its branches shade the village. Let us explore White Tree itself. All right, so I'm not given a I'm not given a horse here, so it's, it may be, may take me a bit of extra time to look around here, but I'm sure we'll find something of note. Oh, hello. Uh, it must be our people around here. Yes, hello there. All right. Well, uh, I would like to uh, jump in here, see what this is. Usually, uh, seeing things that are out of place is the way to complete these uh, exploration goals and so far I'm not getting I'm not getting very lucky <laughs> actually which is kind of surprising but maybe I need to look around a little bit deeper the weirwood is huge towering over the village a set of runes have been hung on the side written in the old tongue some dogs crawled on top of me during the night. My cloak was almost dry when one of them pissed in it. Or perhaps it was Brown Banar. Have you noticed that the rain stopped the instant I had a roof above me? It will start again now that I'm back out. Gods and dogs alike delight to piss on me. At least you're alive. <laughs> the dead are likely dull fellows, full of tedious complaints. The ground's too cold. My gravestone should be larger. Why does he get more worms than I do? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, very true. So snow as far as the eye can see, climbed up into the trees myself to have a look. What about the wildlings? No sign of them. Or anything else for that matter. Just snow as far as I can see. Okay. Well, I have actually looked around the entire village, so I decided to talk to the uh, relative people in here and see what's going on. Cold is what this is. We're beyond the wall. Yes, but it was cold south of the wall as well. This is just worse. Really bites my bones. Well, I'm sure it does. I... Don't exactly know if there's anything else that I can do here. I mean, it seems like I have explored basically everything that I can. I don't know where any other exploration goals might be, but it hasn't said that I have been successful in fully exploring the entire thing. So I suppose I will look around a little bit more. 
Ah, we come across an old chest half buried in the mud and snow. Wow, now that... <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to find that. I really don't know how you're supposed to find it, but we're going to loot it. And as you can see, it, we have an ice pick and some leather gloves. These go, these things are not particularly good, but I'm going to take them anyway just for interest's sake. And I believe that is indeed it. All right, so we can now continue to Craster's Keep, which is exactly what we will do. Making your way northwards, the men of the Night's Watch grow ever more vigilant. Every village you come across is deserted, and the only sounds to be heard are the, how are the howls, uh, I was going to say the howls of owls, no, the hoots of owls, and the occasional howl from a wolf. You arrive at Craster's Keep, situated in the haunted forest atop a low hill with an earthen dike around it. It looms over the surrounding forest. There is, an at, least, there is at least one gate on the southwest side of the compound and a stream runs around the north end of the hill. The gate is decorated with the skulls of a bear and a ram. Inside the dike there is also a midden heap, a pigsty, and a sheepfold. So let us explore Craster's Keep. Hmm, this might be a little bit easier than the village. Hopefully there's not going to be any half-buried chest this time around. Okay, so we have Malador Lock here, we've got uh, Buckwell, Ulmer, and we have Edison, the wonderful, <laughs> wonderful complaining guy. Alright, Craster's Keep is old and worn. More of a Dalban Wattle Hall than an actual keep. All right. Well, yes, that that is that is kind of uh, <laughs> that does kind of come across actually from how uh, how it is represented here. Maybe we can find some of the other exploration goals relatively easily. Well, we should probably talk to Jon Snow because he's right here. We might as well talk to him. Elias Mormont, he says. Have any wildlings been sighted? Not one. Dywin has been scouting miles ahead of us, and so has Bedwick. Every village is abandoned. Well, that is suspicious, if ever I heard it. Yes. Anyway, we are going to actually head over here, because I've noticed that there is a little uh, outcropping here, a little village that is accompanying the keep, and it must make sense for us to look around here as well. I would assume that there's probably going to be some kind of exploration goal. Ah, you come across an old chest half buried in the mud and snow. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious right now? A long knife? Okay, I'll take the long knife. Is is that is that it though? I don't think that's it actually. I think there are a couple more, maybe one more exploration goal. It did not say that we were completely successful in exploring this area. Although I don't know whether I need to be to be honest. Maybe I can just move on and it's actually not going to penalize me in any way and it's basically just a, a way to gain some additional experience along the way because obviously we're gaining our companions a pretty significant amount of levels right now and i think that's pretty cool but well if i can't find anything else then i suppose we will just move on so i have attempted to press tab and leave the area but unfortunately it just takes me back here it just says explore craster's keep and that's the only thing i can do so i assume what i need to do is speak to some of the characters here and that will then give me the completion if you know what i mean because i have literally walked around the entire perimeter of this area and i can't find anything so it, it's either that there is a an extremely small area where i've missed it because obviously it's a massive area. It's much, much bigger than the previous one. Anyway, once they figure out a way to work a dead horse, we'll be next. Likely I'll be the first too. Ed, they'll say, dying's no excuse for laying down no more, so get on up and take this spear. You've got the watch tonight. Well, I shouldn't be so gloomy. Maybe I'll die before they work it out. At least you've got warm water. I could do with a bit of boiling about now. If the kettle were larger, I might jump in. Though it'd sooner it were wine than water. There are worse ways to die than warm and drunk. I knew a brother who drowned himself in wine once. It was poor vintage, though, and his corpse did not improve it. <laughs> uh, that guy is uh, that guy's pretty funny. Okay. Can't remember it being this cold this far south before. Oh, well, thanks, thanks for that. Yes? Have any wildlings been sighted? Not yet, but we'll give them a thrashing when we find them. And uh, the woods are too quiet. Ah, Yes, so apparently you do need to speak to the uh, you do need to speak to the NPCs. Okay, that's that's actually good to know because, as I say, I kind of walked around and tried to find more things. Anyway, let's continue the journey north. Setting out from Craster's Keep, the train of men and horses moves slowly through the woods, muttering under their breath. The men of the Night's Watch remain vigilant, but some of them have started to feel the cold. After a hard march, you arrive at the fist of the first men. 
located next to the milk water. The hill offers commanding views, with the slopes at a dangerous angle to the north and west, and only slightly less dangerous to the east. There is a ring wall of chest-high grey stone that crowns the top of the steep, stony hill, making it hard for any enemy to approach the top. While Lord Commander Mormont sends out scouting parties, the rest of the men start reinforcing the hill, repairing the ring wall as best as they can, gathering supplies and sharpening their swords. With the fist fortified and scouting parties sent out, all that's left to do is wait. Let's just explore once again. And uh, I'm going to be attempting to speak to the people relatively... Uh, well, this is just a ranger. I don't know whether he's going to say anything. Do nothing. Yes, he's not going to say anything, of course. But hopefully we'll be able to find some pretty interesting... i got to say the environments are really nice. I like these snow particles as well, by the way. I, I know I haven't really commented on that, but I think it's really cool to have all these environments. The one thing that I'm not really enjoying is obviously the fact that <laughs> the uh, chests are pretty hard to find, but maybe that's just me. Any news from the scouting parties? Hardly any news. We know that Mance has gathered almost all of the wildlings up in the frost fangs. The wildlings the half-hand captured told us they were looking for something up there, but they couldn't tell us what. There's always a bear. What? One killed my brother when I was young. Afterward, it wore his teeth around its neck on a leather thong, and they were good teeth, too. Better than mine. I've had nothing but trouble with my teeth. Oh, well, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for letting me know. Thank you. That's very, very nice. Maybe a bit, a bit too, a bit, a bit too much uh, information, right there. Okay, so let's have a look at these people. We must be nearing the end of the world. Seven, save us! It's getting colder. Yeah, that's for sure. This place is well fortified. Well, yeah. I mean, you can see from all around. It's pretty good. Could do something with. Uh, could do with something other than bread and stew now. Oh, I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind a good stew. Uh, went up the trees. Ain't seen nothing but snow and shadow for miles around us. Yes, that is indeed very true. Maybe I need to go to the uh, small little wall here. That might give me an exploration. No? Okay. Apparently not. Ooh, I should probably talk to Lord Commander Mormont. That would probably make sense. Any news from the scouting parties? Man's raider is gathering all his strength in the frost fangs, and the only way from, uh, from there is down the milk water. This is a strong place. We'll stop him here. Well, I hope so. And uh, then we have Sir Ottin over here. Yes, any news from the scouting parties? Not yet. The half-hand went up the frost fangs with snow and the rest, but we haven't heard back from them yet. Ooh, that's problematic. Not hearing from them is uh, not the best. I think I might just need to speak to the remaining NPCs, and then we'll probably have successfully explored the area, but... Well, I haven't actually gained any exploration goals whatsoever. I haven't actually uncovered any yet. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we found an old chest right here. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I <laughs> I'm not I'm not really gonna complain too much about it because it I think it might be easy to find for some people. I mean, you can see that right there. So technically, if you I don't know, I feel like it's maybe a bit too difficult to find. But that's maybe that's just me. As I said, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right places. But as I say, it could be random. I mean, now that I know that there's basically always going to be a chest, it's probably a good idea for me to look for that relatively close to the center of the area. Anyway, let's continue. As the day goes on, the temperature drops steadily. One of the men complains of a cold smell, whatever that means. Suddenly, the sound of a horn is heard, announcing rangers returning. Then a second one, warning of an attack. Then a third one, not heard in thousands of years. The dead have arrived. Defend the camp. Let us do this. All right. So I've got my uh, I got my 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 club, and uh, I got my friends right here, and uh, hopefully, whoa. Okay, these guys these guys have come decked out in all kinds of like frost weather gear. Come on now. He, they 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 know what's up. They know what's up. It's very cold here, obviously. Especially the, these skeletons. <laughs> Especially the skeletons here. Okay. So whoa. There's actually a lot of people. That is actually a lot of people coming in here. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something here. And I'm, and by that I mean I'm going to have to actually play well. Instead of just my usual stuff. Great. Very nice, isn't it? Okay, come on, fellow. Kill the, kill them. What, what's he doing? Why, why is he just standing there? Oh, wow. I'm actually kind of worried here for a second. I am actually kind of worried. Let's do a thrust. 
Yeah, oh, no, that did not do anything. But it's okay, because we, we, he actually killed that guy now. That's nice. Okay, nice thrust there. There we go. Okay, are we actually winning? Or are, are we actually losing? I, I don't actually know right now, but I have killed that guy, which is good. And maybe we can do some damage here as well. Oh, he's he's pretty good. He's pretty good at what he does. He's pretty good at what he does. Gonna bring out my, my club again, and we'll see what we can do. This is, okay, this is pretty tricky. This is pretty tricky. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to win here. Uh, maybe should have been a bit higher level for this. What? Why are there so many? Are we meant to lose? Are we meant to lose this? Because, I mean, I don't know whether you've noticed, but there are many, many enemies in the area. And I, personally, I, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what you're supposed to do against these this many enemies. There's no way that any army, no matter whether you have, I don't know, elites or whatever, would be able to deal with this many units, surely. Well, whatever the case, I will just be doing my thing, which is, of course, just backing up as much as possible and seeing what we can do. But, I mean, you can see just how many units there actually are. I assume this is meant to happen and we are meant to lose. Is that true? I mean... <laughs> I don't kind of, I don't really want to elongate things if that is intended, but it just kind of says to me that it is probably intended, but I don't really want to lose in, in case it isn't. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't exactly know what to do right here. Maybe just continue killing some people and see see what happens if I actually do get killed. I mean, look at this. All the Night's Watch have been slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. Wow, that's a pretty cool axe that guy has. Yeah, yeah, nice damage, nice damage. Maybe I can get some, some better damage here as well. Yes, yes, take that, take that, take this, and that, and many, many more things. I mean, it's not looking good for me right now. Let's just say that. It is really not looking good for me. Thankfully, they're super slow. I mean, I'm happy that they did not give them a huge amount of athletic skill, because I think we would be in dire straits right now, even more than we already are. Ooh, gosh, got hit in the face. That was, that was bad. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at what actually happens. Okay, so, ah, so that was actually intended. That was actually intended. Okay, so falling beneath the tide of whites, you lie unconscious in the snow. You awake with a sudden start, tied to the back of a horse. Groaning, you try to lift your head, struggling to make sense of everything. One of your men carried you to the line of horses, and as the Lord Commander made a break with everyone left standing, you came with them, albeit tied to the back of an old garron. Regaining your senses, you can see a line of men in front of you, moving slowly through a densely wooded area. As the horses become more tired and the weather worsens, the Lord Commander organizes the injured to be put on horseback and sets the able men walking with torches to guard the flanks and rear. Dark shapes can be seen amongst the trees but the dead men keep their distance. After what feels like days of walking, you finally arrive at Craster's keep and the remainder of the ranging huddle inside his hall. Craster's wives are banished to his outhouse, while he himself sits at the end of his hall, a mug of ale in hand and a mean stare in his eyes. Huddling outside the keep, you take counsel with your remaining men and you decide to start out for the wall immediately. Following the dirt track from Craster's Keep, you make slow time. The remaining Garons are tired, and two of them quickly succumb to the cold. Pressing onwards, some of your men also start to feel the cold, and it's not long before some of them lie down to sleep, never to awake again. But these guys are just wounded, they're not killed. Oh well, <laughs> I guess that's just how it goes. Walking on, you and your remaining men finally see the shape of the wall in the distance, Hurrying along, you notice that the forest around you has gone completely quiet. Feeling a cold wind rising, you finally reach the gate leading into the tunnel, and three stewards meet you inside. Shaking, you're handed a mug of mulled wine, while your men almost collapse around you. Being ushered inside by two rangers, you head down the tunnel, and finally you see the doorway leading into Castle Black. Entering the yard, you see a few men of the Night's Watch training, but Castle Black seems almost abandoned. As you walk by one of the young recruits, you hear them talking in hushed voices. The young wolf is dead, you hear one tell the other. Enter the yard, let us do it. 
All right, so th th I, I suppose that was intended to happen. Explore Castle Black. Okay, so let's have a look at my Maester Eamon. Good to see you up and about. What has happened? It's hard to know. What remained of the ranging came in with you, though I suppose some stragglers might still be making their way through the haunted forest. It seems unlikely, though. They brought ghastly news. Lord Commander Mormont was killed by his own men, our sworn brothers. Tollette told us what happened. It seems a quarrel broke out over the lack of food while at Craster's keep, and some of our less honorable brothers confronted Craster, who threatened them with an axe. It came to blows, and in the end, both Craster and Lord Mormont lay dead. Are you serious? Are you serious for that right now? That's, that's not good. That is not good at all. It's a terrible thing for brother to turn against brother, and to do so while under the roof of a host, one who invited you into their home and offered you bread and salt. It seems to be a fashion of sorts in these times. While you were unconscious, we had a raven from White Harbor. The king in the north is dead, and Roose Bolton has been created warden of the north in his stead. The banners have been called home, and the lords have sworn fealty to King's Landing. It is unclear what exactly happened. All we know is that a number of Northmen died during the wedding between Lord Edmur and his fray wife, including Rob Stark and many of his bannermen. Winterfell belongs to the Boltons now. How the Northmen will react is unsure. White Harbor and the Glovers are yet to bend the knee. The Night's Watch has seen changes as well, Elias. Janos Flint has arrived or shall we say, Janos Slint, I, I said Flint for some reason, has arrived and taken over command of the garrison. Now I need you to continue your rest. You are not yet well enough to walk around. Indeed, I see. Thank you very much. Okay, so I will be, I will be doing that. Terrible thing to be killed during a feast. One ought to never slay a man who has taken your salt and bread. It's bad luck. At least you're alive. I'd rather have been at that wedding. It seems more appealing than having to trek through a snowstorm with dead men haunting you. Bastards, a lot of them. The Northern Lords will never abide this affront to their dignity. What will they do? Who knows? It won't matter to us. We stand aside from the cause of the realm, but I expect that their revenge will be spectacular. Yes, I'm sure it will be. But where is Jon Snow? Where is where is he? Pa, Frey, Lannister, Baratheon, none of them have honour, none of them have faith. They killed guests beneath their own roof. Men who had eaten their food, drunk their wine. The gods will curl and howl at this affront to them. Mandalays, Umbers, Mormons, and Locks, all of them lost sons and daughters. They will not forget. What will they do? What every man who is not a craven should do. They ought to march straight down there and burn the castle. Kill the lord, kill his sons and his grandsons and their sons. Kill the daughters, the granddaughters and their daughters. Kill the nephews, uncles, nieces, aunts, good brothers and fathers-in-law. <laughs> kill them all. Yes, I'm sure. Okay, very good. So now we can continue. According, uh, so, oh, well, I was gonna, ascending the stairs to the rookery, I was going to say according to the stairs, I don't know, you see a raven leaving the tower flying east. With you and your men rested, you head out. All right, so we now have the north and the westerlands making peace with each other, and as you can see, huge amounts of people have joined the westerlands. So the westerlands are now extremely powerful, and we have now taken a quest called the Wildling Invasion. And I'm sure that is going to be happening happening very, very soon. And as you can see, look at this. Winterfell has changed hands and is now part of the Westerlands. Barrowton has changed hands. Huge amounts of other things are now happening. And that is a significant change to the world map if ever I saw one. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.